Alright, in this video we're going to look at how fast we can take a turn uh, while driving a car. So first let's take a look at what forces are acting on the car. We have uh, in the downward direction we have gravity as usual and in the upward direction we have the normal force. So we need a there must be a horizontal force pointing toward the center of the turn that acts as the centripetal force. And this force is a force of static friction. Now, you may be surprised to hear that it's static friction when the car is actually moving. But here's the reason why. If we look at this wheel and the point, the path of the point on the edge is uh, animated here, you can see that when the um, that point touches the ground or is in contact with the ground, it's not moving left or right. So there's no sliding along the surface. And when we talk about kinetic friction, it's really the sliding motion that matters. Okay, so there's no sliding uh, in rolling motion. So the only case where you would have uh, sliding through a turn would be if the car went too fast and started sliding out of the turn. Uh, we're looking for something a bit safer than that, so we'll use static friction. Now let's take a uh, highway exit ramp or entrance ramp. Um, like we see here at uh, on the um, east side of Terre Haute at the uh, exit from I-70 and State Road 46. Uh, the radius of that turn uh, from Google Maps I estimate to be about 60 meters. So how fast uh, can you go through that turn? Well, let's uh, go back to our um, free body diagram. Now uh, we can fill in. We know that the force of gravity is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration due to gravity. I don't know the mass of the car, but I'm hoping that that will cancel out because uh, that'll mean that I don't know. I don't have to know uh, the mass of my car to know how fast I can go through the turn. Uh, that would be great. So from the free body diagram, uh, we can first look at the net force in the vertical direction. So Upward we have the normal force, so we'll write that down with a positive sign. Downward we have the force of gravity, which is negative, and we've already written that as mg. And we know that there's no acceleration in the vertical direction, so those forces add up to zero. In the horizontal direction, uh, we have the force of friction, and that is going to be identified as the centripetal force. So the force of friction then is going to be equal to the mass of the car times the centripetal acceleration. We know the centripetal acceleration is given by the expression v squared over r, where v is the speed of the car and r is the radius of the turn. So uh, we can put that information into the uh, that equation. So we have the force of friction is equal to mass of the car times its velocity squared divided by the radius of the turn. So uh, using the... Uh, equation for the uh, vertical direction we can rearrange and solve that the normal force in this case is equal to uh, the force of gravity on the car mg and uh, that's important because we're dealing with friction here so we know that uh, from the centripetal force that the force of friction is equal to mv squared over r uh, but we're looking for the fastest that you can take the uh, the turn so we're looking for the maximum value of the static friction so that would be equal to mu sub s times the normal force. And we know the normal force is equal to mg, so that becomes mu sub s times mg. So uh, doing some algebra, we have the force of friction is equal to each of these two different uh, expressions, so we can set those equal to each other. Uh, we notice that the mass is the same on both sides, so it cancels out, uh, which is great. Uh, so that means that the mass of the car is not important. And we can calculate the velocity of the car is equal to the square root of the coefficient of static friction times the radius of the turn times the acceleration due to gravity. So for that turn uh, that we uh, the highway exit ramp using that uh, and some coefficients of friction for various conditions of a tire on a road, uh, we see that for a dry road that uh, coefficient of friction is 0 0.7. And that means that the maximum speed you can take the turn is 20 meters per second. Now that corresponds to 45 miles per hour, which is uh, what the uh, probably what the uh, the speed limit sign or the caution sign would say. 
Now, uh, that's for ideal dry road conditions. And we can see with a wet road, that would be 0 0.4 for the coefficient of friction. So that slows down the maximum speed that you can take the turn to 34 miles per hour. And in icy conditions, uh, which we will probably have coming up in the next few months, you have to go really slow. Uh, so in that case, the maximum speed that you can take the turn will be 17 miles per hour. So this is a PSA. Uh, when the roads are wet or icy, especially icy, make sure you slow down.